Joining me now to discuss the ongoing fight against the coronavirus and the prospect of a safe and effective vaccine is Dr. Dean Finelli, a pharmaceutical expert and the partner of the intellectual property of Sayworth and Shaw. So, Dr. Finelli, when we look at the prospect of a vaccine, it's something that many people say we must have before we can get back to normal. The president said that perhaps we could have it by November. Dr. Fauci has said perhaps by the end of the year. And then we've also heard perhaps it's next summer. Where do you think that timetable will be? Yeah, so the U.S., uh, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me. The U.S. is banking on, literally banking on, four products that are in phase three uh, candidates now. And they are the Pfizer vaccine candidate, the Moderna candidate, the J&J &J candidate, and the a AstraZeneca candidate. And two of those, the Pfizer and Moderna, are most advanced. And I could see those at the end of the year maybe getting some emergency use authorization, for example, for healthcare workers, people uh, with uh, elderly underlying conditions. But realistically, for the general public, we're probably looking at some point in Q, late Q1, Q2 of 2021 at the earliest before the general public would be administered a vaccine. And that's assuming things continue to move forward uh, and no hitches come up with these candidates in phase three now. And those companies that you just named right there, I mean, they're pharmaceutical giants. They're not necessarily new to this by any means. So I think that should provide a little bit of relief to some people who may be reluctant to take a vaccine, acknowledging the fact that it has been an expedited process. But do you think it'll look like the process of perhaps coming out to those most in need, as you were saying, perhaps front uh, line workers or maybe the more vulnerable populations, and then it'll be available to the mass? Or is it something that once they find it, they find it and they start shipping it out? Yeah, that's a good point. So the CDC had put out guidance of prioritization of who should get this first. And as you can imagine, it's, you know, the elderly, those with underlying conditions, high risk people, uh, healthcare personnel, essential personnel. And, you know, that, that encompasses a large group of people. There's about 100 million, over 100 million people in that class alone. But the general public, uh, people not in those classes, you're probably, you know, like I said, talking about, you know, Q2 of 2021 realistically. Yeah, and it's interesting, too, because even if it were to come out uh, and just, for example, be select populations, that would still be beneficial for the sake of transmission on a large scale, I'm assuming. I mean, if people aren't, for example, aren't uh, contracting the disease, they're not passing it off to the other people, it should at least make a dent in the way that it's going around as well. But I want to ask, too, so when it comes to the response to this virus, does it seem like a vaccine is the only way that we can truly return back to normal? I know that some people will bring up herd immunity. I know some People will say that, uh, I mean, President Trump is a testament to the idea that even the most protected people in the world can get this virus. Is the vaccine the end all? Yeah, unfortunately, you know, if we had strict adherence to mass guidelines, you know, that would probably get us where we're going, at least to normalcy. But, you know, getting us back to a situation where we didn't have to wear a mask, where we were, you know, this time last year, you know, a vaccine is really the only way to do it. And you brought up herd immunity. You know, that is a situation where, you know, you have enough of the population is immunized to stop the spread of the disease. And here, you know, I've heard it's about, I've read it's about 70% or so of the population. So you're talking over 200 million people. So, you know, you get herd immunity either through vaccination or naturally getting the virus and then overcoming it. And, you know, to, to expect that we can get herd immunity on the natural side without a vaccine would be catastrophic because then you're just talking about, you know, right now we have about 8 million or so deaths, or excuse me, cases and 200,000 deaths, you know, with yeah. trying to get to herd immunity without a vaccine would be talking about millions of deaths that would just be a catastrophe. No, I mean, that's a very good point. I mean, just taking where we are right now and then amplifying it by that same number that you were talking about to get to that 70 percent, that's a very problematic number. I mean, don't get me wrong. The 210,000 people that we're talking about right now, that's problematic within itself. But I mean, if we talk about amplifying that number even greater, that's something that I think everybody wants to avoid. But we talked earlier about the expedited process of this vaccine and how uh, thanks to Operation Warp Speed, they've been able to beat the record. I believe the previous record was something like four years for a vaccine development and the typical time is around 10 years. And here we are about nine months after the pandemic and we're starting to talk about the prospect of a vaccine. Do you fear that people won't be confident in a vaccine? We've heard some Democratic lawmakers saying they don't trust the Trump administration. But what about when it comes to the science of the vaccine itself? Do you trust the American people will be willing to take it? Uh, I hope so. You know, going back to your herd immunity, we're going to need a lot of the American people to trust this. And, you know, in May, a poll said about 70 percent of the public would take this. You know, a recent poll in September said it's down to 50 percent. So that's not going to get us where we need to be. So I'm 
I think what we'd, I'd like to see is, you know, a publicity campaign, because I think a lot of the skepticism has to do with people just, you know, rushing to jumping to conclusions, mm -hmm. thinking that this is getting rushed and safety or uh, effectiveness are going to, you know, be compromised. But, the, you know, the FDA is literally the gold standard regulatory agency. They have top scientists. As you mentioned, the comp companies that are bringing the most advanced candidates are some of the top companies in the world with expert scientists. You know, they have the highest degree of ethics. And so I'm hopeful that as people see, you know, friends starting to get this and as they understand more that those numbers will go up. But certainly, you know, we need as many people as possible to get this. And, you know, some of these vaccine candidates are two shots. So not only get the first shot, but, you know, come back three or four weeks later and get a second shot. And I know sometimes the pharmaceutical industry gets a bad rap, but I think this is one of the instances where I'm very thankful for what they're doing. I mean, the private public partnership, when we're looking about what they've done in this pandemic, not only when it comes to testing, but the mere fact that we're talking about a vaccine at this stage in the pandemic. I mean, it really is the work of God to some degree. And I want to thank everybody who really get, goes into it because their work at whether it's Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson Johnson, it's going to save thousands of lives, countless lives for that matter. So I think that that is a silver lining amid all of this, maybe instilling a, a little bit more confidence in the people who are putting their efforts on the line for this. But Dr. Dean Finelli, I really appreciate you coming down, foreshadowing what may be happening with the vaccine. Thank you.